This fourth video picks up where the last build left off, the construction of the solar air heater box. I will share the construction approach I took and the materials chosen, as well as a few lessons learned. First, I'd like to send out a big thank you to everyone that has shared with me their ideas and suggestions. What a great little project this is becoming. Let's start by sharing a few lessons learned. In an earlier video, I shared the process I followed to manufacture the solar air heater tubes. I need all of these tubes to be exactly the same length to facilitate the connection to a manifold not yet manufactured. As I was stacking the completed tubes to be photographed, I noticed one of the tubes was slightly shorter than the rest. As it turns out, not all cans are created equally. This particular can comes in 330 milliliters, slightly smaller than the 355 milliliter cans I've been using for the solar air tubes. Unfortunately, I didn't find this out until after assembly, and of course the culprit was right in the middle. Not wanting to destroy the entire tube, it took a fair bit of finesse to remove this can from the tube and save its neighbors. I know a little more about PL construction adhesive now. It's pretty good stuff. In this video I will cover riveting, both surface and flush, the manufacturing and installation of the intake and exhaust plenums, the electrical testing of the thermal bimetal snap switch, and the cutting and installation of the half inch insulation. Here are 18 separate 17 can solar air tubes for the two 8 foot solar air heaters. Notice the 10 inch of space at the top. When these units are assembled, there will be a 5 inch exhaust manifold at the top and a 5 inch intake manifold at the bottom, with the cans occupying all of the center area. These next few pictures capture the installation and attachment of the solar air box tops and bottoms. The procedure involves using a smaller diameter drill bit as a pilot and then drilling to final size for the rivet only after the two pieces are mated together. Here you can see the pieces being held together via clicos. A clico is a fastener widely used in the manufacturing and repair of aluminum skinned aircraft. It is used to temporarily fasten sheets of material together. Clico pliers are used to compress the internal spring to enable the clico to be inserted into the hole. When released, not unlike a wall anchor, the clico spreads, firmly holding the two pieces together. The function of the Clico is to temporarily hold material in the exact position during the manufacturing process. It enables the pieces to be mated together perfectly, taken apart, deburred, primed if needed, and then once again used to hold the pieces together while permanent rivets are installed. Where the glass will lay flat on the face of the solar air heater box, it is necessary that I install flush rivets rather than surface rivets. For that you need a hand rivet squeezer with a punch and die dimpling set to place a small dimple for the rivet to rest in. The finished product produces a flush rivet. The next step was to determine the exact location of the intake and exhaust plenums. I manufactured the intake and the exhaust pipes for the two solar air heaters from a single piece of 5 inch HVAC plenum.
This is a bimetal snap switch, sometimes referred to as a snap action thermostat. I initially mentioned this feature back in my first video. Prior to installing the unit in the solar air heater, I wanted to test it. Yeah, don't get any, don't get any closer. It's at 36, 30, 35. Now what I'm looking for was a thermostat that closes the circuit around 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. So as the solar air heater box heats up, once it reaches 35 Celsius, the electric fan turns on, bringing heat into the building. Additionally, when the sun dips behind a cloud and the interior of the chamber begins to cool, the snap switch will reopen the circuit, stopping the fan somewhere around 25 Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit. To test it, we simply connected the leads to a multi-tester and used a blow dryer to raise the temperature and ambient air to cool it. A little closer. There we go, at 34, okay, shut her off. That is working perfectly. The bimetal snap switch will be installed in the interior of the exhaust manifold, constantly monitoring the temperature of the air being brought into the dwelling. My insulation plans include two sheets of one half inch insulation on the back of the unit and one sheet of half inch on the sides. I used a pneumatic air file to cut the foam. It worked like a hot knife in butter. Time to share with you another mistake. Earlier, while marking the location of the 5 inch holes for the intake and exhaust manifold, I was interrupted with a phone call. After I hung up, I proceeded to mark the hole location, not realizing I was centering the hole on the edge mark rather than a center mark. Thus, I cut the hole exactly 2.5 inches off the correct location. 2.5 inches being the radius of a 5 inch hole. I spent three times as long manufacturing the cover plate to fix my mistake. This was just a test fit of the tubes within the chamber. I have a scrap piece of half inch insulation on each edge. This is the first time I was actually able to test my measurements. The diameter of a pop can times 9 plus half inch insulation times 2 plus quarter inch radius of two bends of 5052 aluminum. Looks like I came out okay.
Stay tuned, more to come.